Hello, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you have been here before, welcome back. I'm happy to see you again. If you're new here, I'm Issa Down. I'm a watercolor artist based out of Colorado, and here on YouTube, I teach you really easy beginner watercolor tutorials, particularly around flowers, which is what today's video is all about. Today, I'm gonna take you through five summer, today, I'm gonna take you through five summer blooms Based on their quintessential shapes, we can create these really beautiful watercolor flowers very easily. So let's go ahead and get started with this easy beginner watercolor tutorial. Hello and welcome back to my channel if you've been here before and welcome to new people who are seeing this for the first time. So I'm gonna teach you five quintessential summer blooms using very basic, simple introductory techniques and building off of the fundamental shape of each flower. The first flower we will do is a rose. So taking some color on your brush, I'm gonna do red. We're gonna start with a little C shape and then coming from the center of that C, we'll just kind of start building out that same, almost like half moon shape all around, just kind of weaving them together and allowing our brush to get a little heavier on the page as we come out to create thicker strokes and thicker lines on the page. And I was running low on pigment there near the outer edge. So I'm just coming in with a little bit more pigment on my brush. And when I feel that my rose is the size that I want it to be, I will come in with just water and start to soften up some of these lines a little bit, particularly along the outer edge of this rose. And softening the lines, I'm just coming in with water along the very outer edge of these um, and just allowing that ink, the pigment to get pulled into where I'm putting the water. But I'm gonna leave the center ones a little bit more detailed so that I can really give that rose illusion. I don't want to completely muddy it up. And then again, just coming in with a little bit more pigment in the shape of the petals here. From there, you could draw a stem coming off of it. But for me, I'm just going to paint two little leaves coming out of the center coming out the sides of this rose. Um, if you do decide to draw a stem or anything like that, just keep in mind that roses tend to cluster their leaves in groups of three to five. So I'm just going to come in and do a really simple rose leaf shape here. And if you find leaves are kind of tricky for you to paint, check out my watercolor, easy watercolor leaves class here on YouTube. Um, it's a quick tutorial that goes over the foundational shapes that you would need to paint any kind of leaf that you want to in whatever shape. So if you feel like you're struggling with that, that would be a really great one for you to take a peek at. It is kind of my own <laughs> developed technique over the years of being a self-taught artist, and it's worked really well for me. All right, I'm just adding a slightly lighter green here. Just add a little bit of dimension. And there you go, you have a very easy, really sweet little watercolor rose. And you can see it's just so easy to create a flower based purely on the general overarching shape of a flower and to still be able to make it recognizable. I'm just gonna do one little leaf over here just because. <laughs> All right, so the next flower we are going to look at is an anemone. And we are gonna do a purple anemone. So I'll bring in some purple paint here. And anemone, anemones are really beautiful. They have this really dark center with five very open petals coming off of them. So we are going to start with Good bit of water and pigment on our brush and start creating the shapes of the petals. 
I like to start at where the center of the flower is and then work out from there. And the anemone petal shape is kind of like that. Almost looks like an aspen leaf. And then I'm just going to build five of these petals coming off of the center. And if I'm wanting to kind of diversify how each one looks, I might come in and only do color on one side. And then I can come in with just water and kind of pull that there. Or I can come back over here and lift up any paint that I might, if it was maybe too dark. And just finish out our petals here. And of course, um, if you want to experiment with coming at different angles, you can do that as well. But for this very basic, just kind of beginner shape based flower, um, I'm just going to keep all of the petals the same shape as they come off of the center. And an anemone is a really fun flower to be able to do that with because most of the time that is actually what it looks like, which is not true for all flowers. All right, I'm just coming in with a little bit more color in here. And anywhere you feel like you put down too much color, you can just come in with a dry, clean brush or not a drenched <laughs> brush that is clean and pick that up. All right, now the center of the anemone is quite dark, so I'm gonna come in with a Payne's Gray and create the initial circle of the center. And I'm gonna make sure it's touching all of my petals here. And in fact, I'm also going to kind of make some of my petals a little thicker. Just kind of make sure that they're all touching because I want part of this center to spread out into my petals. And then using just the very tip of my brush, I'm actually going to come in with some more pigment and I'm just gonna start flicking kind of out into the petals because anemones also have these really beautiful little stamens that kind of uh, branch out from the center. So as that dries, it'll really look like a really beautiful anemone flower. Now anemones have a really, really fun petal that comes off the stem. So we're going to pull a stem down from the center and either just off of the top of it or not too far down. There are usually some little tenderly leaves that come branching off for both. And they're just really, really fun. And I do go over in that um, how to paint using watercolor leaves class here on YouTube, I do go over how to paint an anemone leaf. And there you go, very easy anemone. Um, on this flower, it would not stop here. Um, it would continue down. It tends to have some leaves kind of coming out somewhere near the center of the stem. So this would continue down uh, were I painting this in its full, full glory. Our third flower for the day is Delphinium. Now Delphinium is a really beautiful tall blue flower and it is comprised of a center stem with a whole bunch of tiny little flowers growing all the way around it, starting kind of wider at the bottom and getting narrower at the top. And so to paint this, we want to paint starting from the bottom and we're just gonna come in and paint this kind of shape over and over again, building up on top of each other. We might come and do a few that are just more on their side. We might do some that are shaped the same, but just maybe just the outline of the flower instead of filling it in. And you're gonna come in either with pigment or you can also pull up some pigment uh, just by coming in with water on your brush and just adding more and more as we build this flower up and by the top they are going to be quite small 
So our blooms will be a lot bigger on the bottom and get smaller as they go up. And then while it's still wet, I like to come in with my green stem. And I'm gonna come in with quite a, you know, a good amount of pigment on my brush, but I don't want a lot of water because my flower itself is already quite wet. And I'm just gonna use the tip of my brush and kind of pull down in the center here. And you can see that the colors start to mix a little, oh, that's too much water, a little in the blue. And if you get too much in there, just come in with a dry, drier brush and just start to soak it up a little. You can dab some more blue in there. I like how it looks when it gets kind of mixed together. So I'm not overly concerned about that, but I wouldn't want it to get muddy. So I will, you know, did pull out a little bit of it. And then we can start, you know, just kind of keep continuing to build our flower here. And if you want to add more, once you get the stem, sometimes I like to do that. Once I see where the stem is coming out, come in with a little bit more blue, which kind of starts mixing with that green then, and then you get really interesting kind of effects in there. And I also like to often just bring the very tip of my brush and just kind of flick it out from the pigment just to kind of add a little bit of movement and flow and almost the illusion of just different petals kind of branching out differently. Um, you know, maybe some leaves coming out of there. Really stunning kind of flower um, that, that you can create full of different blues and greens just by using two different colors there and varying how much water I'm using and if I'm pulling any of that green from the stem into the flower or not. Next up, we're gonna do Echinacea, which is a cone flower. So this is a really fun one that I love to teach because it is pretty foundational for a lot of flowers. So think like a daisy. Um, so think something like a daisy, Echinacea, even a sunflower. Um, all kind of have this sort of general, some similar shape. But the cone flower starts with, the, no, the echinacea, starts with a brown center that comes up almost like in the shape of a cone. And so I'll come in with some browns and I'm filling it in with these tiny little kind of dash um, lines on the page, kind of just like those just building on top of each other over and over again so that it gives it a little bit of texture within that center. And then Echinacea is a lovely pink, like almost like a reddish pink. So I'm going to add just a little bit of red to a pink over here just to make it a little bit brighter. And then we're going to come from the center where we touch the center with the tip of our brush, push down and then lift up. Now this technique, I go into detail in that watercolor leaf class. Um, so if you are curious to learn more about how I make that shape, again, do check out that class. And we just pull a bunch of those different petals down from the center, maybe a couple different ones off the side there. And then the stem of the echinacea would come down quite straight from the center, but I don't want to get really muddied in there. So I'll, I would start pulling it down from where it would come out from under the petals here. And last, let's just look at some really simple lavender. It is such a quintessential, lovely little summer flower and it's just one of the easiest to paint and in the beginning of my watercolor painting career i really love to use lavender on different cards like say for mother's day or birthdays it was a really 
simple flower to paint onto a handmade card. So to create lavender, you're just gonna come in and make this tiny little oval shape. And again, like with the delphinium, some of these can be, you know, just outlined. Some of them can be kind of mixed together. So it almost looks smudged and you're just gonna get kind of thinner and thinner as you come up. And then, Again, similar to the delphinium, we'll come in with the center stem with a not too wet brush. We're gonna pull right down through the paint here, particularly where there was any white area, and pull the stem down. Now, lavender does have a lot of that green wrapped around the base of its little bud. So I will then come in and kind of pull some of that green around. And I love the mixture of purple with green, so I'll often come in and kind of create a couple more little buds because this bright green that I'm using with this darker purple creates an almost like light pink mauve kind of color. Um, and I just think that's a really pretty, pretty color. And it's fun to be able to pull it out of just using the stem here. And then lavender just has these tiny little leaves that kind of come off. But today is definitely less about the leaves and more about the flowers. So there you have it, five quintessential summer blooms. We have our rose, anemone, delphinium, echinacea, and lavender. Hey guys, it's me again, Isa. If you liked this tutorial, make sure you subscribe to my channel and leave a comment. Tell me something you loved about the class. Feel free to ask me some questions, but definitely subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future tutorials. See you next time.